Although the drop in oil prices is likely to be short-lived, the U.S. shale oil industry is going to be hit the worst. A lot of the heavily indebted energy companies are clearly going to go bankrupt. $50 to $60 a barrel is kind of a minimum for a lot of these guys to survive. But it is the banks that are expected to take the biggest hit for the oil price drop. The fracking industry was an attempt to make money off of high oil prices by going into the ground in a new way and depleting other oil resources that the United States had. The fracking companies, and here comes the big part, did not use their own money. They borrowed huge amounts of money from America's biggest banks to fund the enormous expense of setting up the infrastructure to pull that oil out of the ground. The problem is when the price of oil collapses the way it did yesterday, the fracking companies cannot generate enough income to repay the bank loans that are out and due from them. Everybody who's in this business knows that with the fracking companies going down with the 50% drop in their share values, you're looking at banks that are trembling right now. And that is going to have to call in other loans to other parts of our economy to cover the losses that they're experiencing as the fracking companies tell them we can't repay. Where this plays out, is who else will be hurt in this tumult. Nobody knows, but the market is scared to death that it will be a general decline, and that what the Trump government will do will be too little and too late. This is not just the problem of a coronavirus or of an oil price change, this is a reality in which the basic patient here, the American economy, is so vulnerable. Our economy is so hyped up on credit ever since 2008 that we are now in a position of enormous vulnerability where anything can prove to be the straw that breaks this business back. $50 is pretty much what analysts have determined as the break-even point for the energy producers in the US. So when oil goes below $50, that means they are unable to service their debts. That will entirely trigger a rolling bankruptcy across the entire sector. And that will hit the financial sector because all their outstanding loans will eventually default, and the banks are going to be the ones taking the hit for it. It's about time the banks took a hit for something considering how much we were forced to pay them and continue to do so as a result of their own massive corruption. And we need to get rid of fractional reserve lending too. Otherwise, the bank runs a problem. It's counterfeiting and causes over 90% of inflation. American oil will never be able to compete with Middle Eastern oil. Shale oil is not profitable at all without OPEC plus manipulations and band-aids. Putin did not want to provide a cushion for American oil this time to punish them for hindering Nord Stream 2. The oil cabal has built this monopoly on taxpayers' dollar and price-gouging consumers. They need to be held accountable and use their ill-gotten wealth to continue the oil industry they monopolized. There will be decoupling from the petrodollar as the world moves towards a new economy. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels. I do upload videos there, too, on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you. 90% of the market is owned by a very small number of people. The stock market benefits corporations and the rich. A very small percentage of people trying to keep to the whole world in slavery, in poverty. Speculators and marketing oversold fracking, and they and they should not be bailed out. The environment cannot support more pollution. Mother Earth is running a fever. Growth at any cost is killing us. We want real money, gold, and silver. Then economists and bankers can get a real job. It is not only the shale oil fracking but also the auto industry and the retail, they all are having trouble paying back the banks. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get worse. The tsunami will happen from 2021 onwards. We are heading to the end. Your redemption draws near. Our debt shall consume us. The Fed can't print their way out of this. A crash is imminent. Lots of things are going to be unprecedented in the future. We live in interesting times. The economy had tons of issues before the coronavirus or the drop in the price of oil. Corona had a 0% effect on the market. The inflation of the dollar and the repo market, the Federal Reserve, neither federal nor have any reserve, had everything to do with it. The Federal Reserve Act as and always has been unconstitutional, but no one knows what fiat currency is, or understand that we have been fooled to believe that this is capitalism. America is a socialist empire. It didn't start with coronavirus, it started in 1913 when the criminal banking cartels created the Federal Reserve Central Bank and have been fleecing the sheep ever since. 
a fake print money from thin air economy while claiming to be the richest nation in the world. That's what got us here. Worry not. They are not done printing. The bubble will get bigger before it pops. Ten years ago, it might have been fixable if they let it pop. Today it will lead to a great depression. With the money, they will pump into the economy in a sad attempt to save it that my friend will lead to the greatest depression. Clock's ticking. They already tried that last night and got it limit up green, too much air under this market no liquidity. As I type, they have the Dow green 200. It was red 80, not 10 minutes ago. Not much of a show after 2000 down yesterday. As Biden would say, I know how to turn the market around, but I forgot my plan. A decade of people whose job it is to gamble with free money coming from the government. And no one sees how this could end badly? Most of these dweebs in investment banks don't know jack ass about the history of markets other than they know how to gamble. You can't call any of these businesses when they've been built on the back of free cash from the government. The same goes for the banks etc. How do you square spending taxpayer dollars to bail them out, yet on the retail side, they're charging people 25% plus on credit card rates. You can't feed at the government through tax dollars paid by people in this country, and then sell something to the same people. It doesn't wash. They are not a business they are a parasite. The Fed has already lost control of the bonds. And tomorrow or the day after, they'll be screaming for a rate cut, again. Wall Street and the banks failed the economic test in 2008. No more bailouts. Rather close them and confiscate to bail out the main street. No more socialism for the banks and corporations. Been there, done that. Cancel all debts. End the Federal Express Reserve in time to back the dollar with gold and print our own national currency. No more usury interest. Enough. The Saudis and Russian could crash US oil and gas companies by lowering the prices. This oil dispute could also spell the end of the petrodollar. It could spell the end of the US dollar's reserve status. And ultimately, with the amount of debt America has racked up, it could spell the end of the dollar entirely. This could be the instrument by which the US dollar loses its reserve status. The only thing was holding up the dollar, allowing infinity printing has been the petrodollar agreement with Saudi Arabia. Coincidentally, Saudi Arabia is locked in this oil dispute with Russia. Maybe the rest of the world, including American allies, are sick of the American government freeloading. It may not be that the Russians are to blame for the recent meeting failing to cut the supply of oil. It may be that Saudi Arabia has an opportunity to blame Russia when secretly, the Saudis are not happy with American money printing. See, the Americans are using the petrodollar to drill for oil in their own country. This completely undermines the petrodollar arrangement with Saudi Arabia that the entire dollar's strength is based on. And we're not talking about America drilling a small amount of oil. We're talking about America in recent years has massively increased oil production, even drilling for oil that is not economical where the cost of production is higher than the oil is even worth. Putting the debt for that on the petrodollar and removing Saudi's incentive to uphold the petrodollar arrangement. If America becomes self-dependent on its own oil drilling, which it now has even if uneconomically. Then all of a sudden, they are far less reliant on Saudi oil. So this is not just a virus problem, but looking at the even bigger picture, I think this entire crisis could be a crisis of the petrodollar itself. Without the so-called petrodollar, the Americans can't print their currency to oblivion and not have any impact on the value of the dollar. That means all of a sudden, the entire US debt is now due, and they can't pay. The dollar bubble will pop. Higher and unstable fossil fuel prices incentivize investment in renewable technologies. The corporatocracy, the plutocracy, the monopolies, and oligopolies will only end when the petrodollar does. The blood dollar derives its value from the consistent exploitation and murder of innocents, and the theft of their resources, through militarism, threats, indebtedness, and corruption. It is clear by now that the markets have detached from reality and drifted off somewhere into mathematical space, with 100% focus on numerical value, while real wealth remains where it has always been, in the form of shipping companies, railroads, productive land and other forms of physical property. The value of a thing derives from its usefulness, and it's a rarity, not from its abundance, and cash and similar are only one mechanism of trade. In the words of Fire Marshal Bill, when will they ever learn?
About 120 years ago, 85% of the folks living in the USA owned and operated small farms. And we had a manufacturing complex second to none, so when the shit hit the fan in 29, most folks could still get by being self-sufficient and all. Now almost everyone sits around their living room entertainment infrastructure waiting for the government to airdrop in, insert whatever here, cash, phones, food, fuel, housing, a new car, etc. God help them when the bailouts stop. There is a virus, yeah, of course. But it is called the Federal Reserve. Get rid of the so-called Federal Reserve, let the government issue the money to stabilize the global economy. Those behind the manipulating, debt-creating central banks have to be stopped. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too on a daily basis. You'll find the links in the description box. Thank you.